And you know, the story of nativity, yung pagkapanganak po ng ating Panginoong Isus, sa sabsaban has been foretold in many of the prophecies in the Old Testament. Marami po sa mga propesya ng Old Testament were actually about the coming of the Messiah. And when we talk about this story, isa po sa mga libro na pupuntahan natin, when we speak of the prophecy of the coming Messiah is one of the books in the Old Testament. And this was the prophecy of the prophet Micah. In Micah chapter 5 verse 2, It says here, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come from to me the one to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. That's from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. You know, with the realization of this prophecy came the story of nativity. At kapag pinag-usapan natin yung story of nativity, dito babalangkasin natin kung ano yung mga naganap bago ang kapanganakan ni Jesus at yung kanyang kapanganakan at yung mga characters na bumisita sa kanya upang siya ay sambahin. You know, there are a lot of characters that we can see in the nativity story. But there are two characters that I would want for us to concentrate on Tonight, unang-una, we'll be discussing about the shepherds. And you know, the story of the shepherds when they visited the child, the baby Jesus, can be found in the book of Luke chapter 2. And when we talk about these shepherds, we are referring to the temple shepherds. At kapag pinag-usapan natin itong mga temple shepherds, ang pinag-uusapan po natin ay yung mga shepherds na nagbabantay po sa mga sheep araw at gabi upang makita nila yung panganganak ng firstborn na tupa. Okay? Bakit importante yung firstborn na tupa na ipapanganak na kailangang tingnan at subaybayan ng mga shepherds na ito? What we have to understand is these firstborn na mga sheep, sila po yung gagamitin upang maging temple sacrifice. This was definitely very much a tradition in the Old Testament they will be sacrificed in the temple for the remission of the sins of the Israelites, provided that we know that the Messiah has not yet come. Ito po ang trabaho ng mga temple shepherds at that time. And though their work is very important sa kapanahonang ito, they were not actually looked up in the society. They were very much looked down ng mga tao sa lipunan. They were not held in high esteem. But we know that there were a lot of shepherds as well in the Old Testament. Nandiyan si Abraham, si Jacob, and also we know of David. These were shepherds just the same. Just like the shepherds, the mga temple shepherds na ito, iba-iba lamang sila ng mga trabaho. And so in Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 12, ito po yung panahon na na-received ng mga shepherds ang message mula sa anghel ng Panginoon. In verse 8, And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. In verse 11, it says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. The angel here sent the message to the shepherds and said, Fear not. Sa gitna ng kanilang trabaho, sa kanilang pagbabantay, sa mga tupa, biglang may nag-appear na anghel sa langit at ang sinabi sa kanila, Fear not. Because I bring good news, I bring you tidings of great joy. You see here God choosing the weak people to be the first recipients of the message that the Messiah has already been born. In verse 10 here, we can highlight yung sinabi ng angel when he said, I bring you good news that will cause great joy not for some people, not for many people, but for all people. You see here, when we talk about 
the story of the nativity. We talk about the coming of the Messiah. The Messiah came not just for some or for many people, but the Messiah came for all people. And this was the message that the shepherds received while they were tending their flock. The message was given by God to the shepherds, not to the kings, nor to the scholars, but to those who are not held in high esteem by the society. And there the shepherds went on to find the Messiah in the manger. And again, when we speak of the manger, there is nothing romantic and there is nothing to be proud of the manger because we are referring to a stable. And when we talk about the stable, ang pinag-uusapan po natin dito ay kainan ng mga kabayo, kainan ng mga hayo. But it was God, the Father, who chose the Son to be born in a stable for the fulfillment of the prophecy that the Messiah will be called Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. And when we talk about God being with us, He cannot be with us if He was born as a king, if He was born in the lineage of a ruler, nung mga hari, nung mga panahon na yon. Okay? But He was born in a stable in the fulfillment of His name to be called Emmanuel. God is with us. Meaning, this baby who was born in the manger will be born just like any one of us. Katulad po ng bawat isa sa atin. Nakipaglaro, sa kalsada, lumaki. And that's why it's very difficult to believe Jesus Christ by many of the people during His time when He was proclaiming that He was the Messiah, the Son of God. Because He was born just like any one of us. It would have been easier kung siya ay anak ng mga ruler ng mga panahon na yon. And they will say, hey, listen to me, I am the Messiah. Pero yon ay magiging contrast nung ibig sabihin ng kanyang pangalan na Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. But not only the shepherds, but also there were the wise men. Siguro po sa ating pagkakaroon ng maraming simbang gabi sa mga nakaraang mga taon, perhaps we've already known that there were not really three wise men sa Bible. Because what we have to understand was that there was no mention kung ilan ang wise men na nagpunta upang magbigay ng kanilang pagsamba sa child na si Jesus. There was no mention whatsoever of how many the wise men were. There was not even a mention whether they were kings. Ito pong mga napapakinggan natin, say for example, yung napaka popular na kanta na We Three Kings of Orient are. Diba? Ito yung medyo nag, nagpaling ng ating kaisipan kung sino ba talaga itong mga wise men na ito. Because again, in the scriptures, wala naman talagang minimension kung ito ay mga hari, kung sila ba ay tatlo. Because at least in the Western tradition, at least, ang sabi po doon, according to the Eastern tradition, ang paniniwala nila merong labing dalawang wise men na pumunta. It was a crowd. Okay? But at least according to the Western tradition, merong tatlo. At yung pinagbasihan nila ay yung tatlong regalong natanggap ni Kristo. That's the reason why at least tradition persisted at ang pagkakaalam ng marami ay mayroong tatlong hari na nagpunta sa sabsaban. Pero hindi naman talaga sa sabsaban yon because when they found Jesus, He was not a baby anymore and He was not a man- in a manger. He was already a child. In fact, He was already... Two years old at that time. Kaya nga po, noong mga shepherds ay nagpunta kay Herodes, ano ang naging pasya ni Herodes? Lahat ng mga bata, two years old and below, should be killed. Why two years old and below? Because the estimation was, Jesus was already two years old at the time that the wise man came to Herod in search of the child Jesus. So hindi po nagsabay yung mga wise men at yung mga shepherds sa kanilang pagpunta. And these wise men came from the east, at least according to the scriptures. They came from the east. And this east is referring to Babylon, the center of the Babylonian Empire. Kung pag-uusapan po natin ang ating geography ngayon, ang Babylon po ay matatagpuan sa bansang Iraq. Sa Middle East po. 
I was researching on this this morning and nakita ko na wala na palang tao ngayon nakatira sa may Babylon. Um, I think that was around 2007 or 2009 na they tried to open it as a tourist attraction. Pero because of the many things that happened, hindi na rin po ito nagsaksid. And itong mga wise men na ito, at least in the scriptures, they were called as the Magi. Okay? Bagoy or Magi. They were actually from uh, before. They were actually coming from the religion of Zoroastrianism. Isa po itong relihiyon noong kanilang mga kapanahunan, and they were so much into magic. Kaya nga po sila'y tinawag na Magi kasi sa kanila kinuha yung pangalan na magic. But then again, not only that, kasi yung word na Magi, dito rin po kinuha yung word na magistrate. Meaning, when we talk about the word magistrate, they were working in the courts of the king. And their words are very much influential that they could be considered as king makers. That's the reason why Herod at that time were so afraid with the words of the wise men because ang sabi nila, where was the king who has been born? We have come here to worship him. Kaya nataranta si Herod nung time na yon because they know who these wise men were. Alam niya kung sino po sila. Ang sabi ni Herod, hindi ko alam kung nasaan sila. Subalit kapag nakita niyo sila, Sabihin niyo sa akin at kapag nakita niyo sila at sinabi niyo sa akin na sila ay mapuntahan ko at ako rin naman ay sumamba sa kanila. But you know, they did not come back to Herod and they traveled and saw the child Jesus when he was around two years old. This is again the reason why at least Herod gave a decree na yung mga bata nung panahon na yon, two years old and below, should be killed. Because he was afraid na yung kanyang kapangyarihan ay mawawala po sa kanya. Jesus was found by the wise men not in the manger or the stable anymore, but he was found in the house already. And when we talk about these shepherds, we know of them as the learned individuals, learned individuals. Sila po ay mga wise men, kaya nga they were studying the stars. We talk about astronomy and all. And they bought and they brought gifts fit for a king. In Matthew chapter 2 verse 9 to 11, ang sabi po dito, After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. Itin kayo na, on coming to the house, hindi na po sa stable, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. You know, both the shepherds and the wise men came to Bethlehem in search for the newborn king. This was in fulfillment of the many prophecies about the coming Messiah na matatagpuan po natin sa Old Testament. And also in our text tonight, in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, let me read this again. But you, Bethlehem Ephratha, though you are a little among the thousands of Judah, yet all of you shall come forth to me. Yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. You know, the prophet Micah, was prophesying at a very turbulent moment in the time of Israel. And he prophesied of the coming Messiah 700 BC, meaning that was 700 years before the Messiah was actually born. He was a 7th century BC prophet. However, thus this prophecy came into fulfillment as God's promise of his covenant to King David as his covenant will remain with a new ruler coming from his own lineage. A king who will not be born in Jerusalem, but from Bethlehem, a village outside of Jerusalem. You know, there were two Bethlehems in that place. That's the reason why it's called Bethlehem Ephrathah. 
The other Bethlehem is actually six kilometers north of Bethlehem. And the other one is this Bethlehem Ephrata. The name Ephrata is actually the old name of Bethlehem, meaning fruitful. Pero ginagamit pa rin nila ito at that time. So it's called Bethlehem Ephrata. There were two Bethlehems. One was in the north, and then here was in the south, Bethlehem Ephrata. The coming of the Messiah had a lot of illusions with King David. Unang-una, do you know that David was born in Bethlehem? And Jesus was also born in Bethlehem. When David was chosen to be the king, he was not one of the many choices. Diba? He was the last because he's the youngest. And then you see Jesus. Nobody would even think that a Messiah would be coming from a manger. And David was also a shepherd, as Jesus was the shepherd of us. You know, the coming king will be born of Bethlehem and will not be coming from the lineage of King Herod. The shepherds went to Herod, actually asking him where the Messiah was because perhaps they were thinking that the Messiah should be coming from their lineage. Magmumula sa kanila. Kaya lang, ang sabi ni Herod, hindi sa amin nagmula dito. And so a star helped them in their travel until they were able to find the child Jesus in their house. The work of the coming Messiah as being our shepherd. You know, God has His way of choosing kung sino yung ating Emmanuel, yung ating magiging tagapagligtas. And in this case, we see God choosing the weak people to receive the message, the good news, and to be the first witness of the gospel message which is the good news of grace. They were temple shepherds who were busy looking for the firstborn. Kasi ito yung isa sacrifice nila for the remission of sins ng mga Israelites. And with the message came yung katotohanan that there will come a time that the temple sacrifices will end. At ito yung nag-end na nga noong dumating ang ating Panginoon, the good news that will bring all the temple sacrifices into an end. This is where the shepherds received the good news of God's grace and after which they preached the good news to their fellows. That is when we say that Bethlehem is the meeting place of God's grace for the shepherds. The end of the sacrifices in the temple because here is the ultimate sacrifice born unto us. Another one is that Bethlehem is the meeting place of God's grace for the wise men. As I said a while ago, when we talk about the wise men, we are referring to learned people. These are people who studied astronomy. Pinag-aaralan nila ang kilos at galaw ng mga bituin because they know of the prophecy about the coming of the Messiah. And when they found Jesus Christ in His house, they offered Him... Three gifts. What were the gifts? We have gold, the frankincense, and the mirror. If we are going to look at the symbolical reasons why they chose the gold, the frankincense, and the mirror, is that when we speak of gold, it talks about kingship. When we speak of frankincense, it's a symbol of Godhead, of Jesus Christ being a deity. And the mirror which was a symbol of death. Jesus Christ is a child who will be king, who came to us in the form of a man, and who will die a cruel death so that we may receive and find grace. You know, the wise men, despite being learned, knew that it would not be in their own works that grace will be received. The wise men in their wisdom came to Bethlehem to see the newborn and to see the good news in the flesh. The good news is God was born as a man, foretold by the prophets, proclaimed by the angels to the shepherds, written in the stars, and studied by the wise men. When we speak of the shepherds, 
is the representation of the meek and the lowly, the marginalized, the people who felt that they cannot be heard in the society. And then you have the wise man, a representation of those who are wise and the learned. These are the opposites of the social strata in the society. Magkaibang magkaiba yung kanilang mundong pinanggalingan. But in Luke chapter 2 verse 20, it says here, Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. And in Matthew 2, 11, And when the wise men had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. The shepherds worshipped God when they heard of the good news. The wise men also worshipped the child Jesus when they saw him. You know, the shepherds and the wise men worshipped Jesus in Bethlehem, the meeting place of God's grace, both for the lowly and the meek, for the wise and the learned. You know, whatever social class we have right now in the society, it doesn't matter in the sight of God because the good news is for everyone. The good news, again, as the angel said, was for all. And it all started in Bethlehem, the meeting place of God's grace. And I will end with this one. You know, Bethlehem, if you are going to study the name Bethlehem in Hebrew, this came from two Hebrew words. The first one is Beth. Pag binabasa po ang Hebrew, it's from right to left natin. So the first word is Beth, meaning house, and Lechem, which means bread. So when we talk about the place Bethlehem, this means the house of bread. This is what Bethlehem actually means. What is the vision of EFC? EFC is the house of bread. EFC is our Bethlehem. This is the house of bread. And just as Bethlehem was the meeting place of God's grace for the weak and the lowly, for the wise and the learned, EFC is our Bethlehem, our house of bread, our meeting place of worship where we as a church experience and partake of the grace of God. Merry Christmas everyone. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat.